Hi there, this is Robert, N4IXT. With Field Day coming up, I thought this would be a good time to talk about Field Day logging software. The software my particular club, the Shelby County Amateur Radio Club, is going to be using is called N3FJP. So, I thought in this video we could take a look at downloading and installing, configuration, and setting it up for networking. Along the way, we'll also do a few entries just so you can get an idea of how the software works. Just a disclaimer, we have no association whatsoever with N3FJP. We've just purchased and used the software and really like it. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look. The first thing we need to do is download the software. To do that, we simply go to the N3FJP website, n3fjp.com. For the specific software we want, we're going to come up here to Contest Logs, ARRL Contest Logs, and we're going to come down here and pick Field Day. It takes us to the Field Day page where all we have to do is come and we're going to click on Download ARRL Field Day Contest Log. It now asks us what do we want to do with this. We're going to click Save As. When it asks where do we want to put this, we're going to stick this on our desktop. And this is just to make it easy. All right, it's going to take just a moment to download. By the way, these steps will be similar depending upon which browser you're using. I'm using Microsoft Edge because I'm running on Windows 10. You'll follow the normal steps for your browser. Okay, now that the software is finished downloading, we're just going to come and click on Run. You might also be able to just go directly to your desktop and run it that way. Now, you may get a message to the effect that Smart Screen can't be reached. This is a Windows 10 feature, so you'll probably only see this on Windows 10. We're just going to go ahead and click Run because we trust good old N3FJP. The next thing that happens is you'll get the Install Shield Wizard up, and we'll just click Next. It now asks where do we want to install it to. We'll just take the default and click Next. And then we'll click Install. All right, I'm going to uncheck Launch the Program. And we'll click Finish because I'll show you how to launch it here in just a second. And that's all there is to installing it. In the next segment, we'll look at configuring the software. Now that we have the software installed, let's proceed to configure it. We're going to double click on the icon that it put on the desktop. And when it comes up, we have a screen we can use to register it. If you got the program purchased, then you would come in here and you would enter your call sign. I'm going to use the one that we registered for our club and you'll key in your password. And yes, I have blurred the password field out so that you can't see it. Sorry, you'll have to get your own. But if you don't have one yet, that's okay. You can simply click the continue button and the software will let you enter up to 20 contacts without having to buy it. Now, the nice thing about that is that you can download the software, work with it at home prior to field day and get a feel for what it's like, practice with it, make sure you're comfortable with it so that when you show up at field day, you'll be ready to log. So with it registered, we'll click on continue. We'll get a nice thank you message. And now we get a nice setup screen. I'm going to enter the call for our club. You'll of course enter your own. And this gives us the message that it said, hey, I looked up your club sign and took a best guess at where you're located at. So I'm going to click OK. And you can see that it put us on the North American continent gave us a latitude and longitude, which is approximate for our location. And that looks good. CQ zone five and so forth. Now for field day, we're going to need to enter our class and section. Now our club is going to be operating 4F. You should check with your field day chairman to see what you're going to be operating as. And we are located in Shelby County, Alabama. Now for the optional area, we have operator and initials. And this can be handy for your field day chairman to keep up with what station this came from. So what I would suggest doing is entering the call sign 
for the person who's operating the station. So if, let's say, I, in for IXT, set up a 40 meter phone station, then I would put this here, and then whoever just happened to be logging would just run under that operator. And for my initials, I'll just put RCC. And now here it says, always display this form on startup. Well, I'm gonna uncheck that so we don't see this every time it launches, but I'll show you how to bring it back up in case you do wanna change it, and we'll click done. All right, I mentioned just a second ago, you could bring that setup screen back up if you needed to. So let's come up here to settings and we'll click on setup. And you can see you get that same screen back. So for whatever reason you decide you need to bring it back up, there it is. And we'll click done. Now, before you're ready to operate, there's a few more things you need to set. You need to configure what band you're on and what mode you're operating on correctly. Well, they're pretty simple. We'll just come up here to the band menu. And I mentioned 40 meter phone. So let's do that as an example. I'm gonna click on 40 and under mode phone. I can also alter these down here through the band at the bottom and I can click to change bands. And you can see all it does is it goes to the next option. So this can be a little bit time consuming if you're really going say from 80 down to 15 meters. So I'm gonna come back up here to band again and we'll just reset it back to 40. So let's enter a sample here. How about uh, my former call sign? And let's say maybe they're operating out of, uh, let's make them a 3F and let's make them coming out of Alaska. And so you can see, I have this nice little new button that tells me, hey, this is a new entry and I can just hit enter and you can see it now appears in the log. If I try to enter it again, it's telling me that it's possible duplicate and it starts showing up at the bottom. And we get a nice big error message, hey, we've already worked him. Now, this duplicate functionality is specific to the band and the mode. So let's say I wanna change from phone to CW. So there's CW. Now if I enter in KG4FGN, it tells me it's 3F and automatically fills out Alaska for me, but it's not showing up as a duplicate because I work them on phone, not on CW. I can hit enter and it will record it for me. All right, that's it for the basic operation. Let's now go look at how to set up networking. During field day, it's likely you'll have multiple stations all logging it would be good to be able to have all that logging data go to a central location. In other words, be pooled in a single spot. This makes it easy for the field day chairman after the event to simply export the data. In addition, if a station goes down or they decide to change the focus of a station, it helps avoid duplicates. Let's say this scenario occurs you have a station that's operating on 15 meter phone during the day. They then switch over to 80 meter phone in the evening. But something happens to that station, either the operator needs to go home or there's an error in the station, the radio goes bad, whatever. So another person decides, well, they're gonna pick up the mantle and run 80 meter phone from their computer. Well, without having the other guys log, He's got no idea if he's working duplicates or not. And that's what networking solves. He will then know everything that the previous 8 meter phone station worked. So how do we set up networking? Well, we need to have one computer that's considered the master computer or the server. All of the data will reside on that particular computer. You can see I have remoted into a computer that's gonna act as my server for field day. I'll come up here to the network menu on that machine. And there's three important things that I need to set. First, down here on the right, I need to select TCP. Then up here, I need to make sure this station name is set correctly. The N3FJP software automatically picks the name of the computer for you so you don't have to worry about it. For the server, 
the this station name and server name should both be set to the same thing. Once I have that, all I have to do is come down and place a checkbox here in the enable status slash chat functions. You have to have all of these things set correctly for it to work. Now with the server set, let's go see what you have to do on one of the other stations. So here's the software on one of the stations and we'll come up here and click network. And by default, it automatically sets the this station name and the server name to the same thing. Well, what we want to do is we want to connect to that machine you saw a second ago, which is Arcane Code Pro 3. If I change the name of the server, it unchecks my enable status box. So I'll need to come down here and check on enable status. Now it's going to take a second. You'll see at the bottom status attempting to connect. It's going to take a second to connect, but now you can see that I'm connected. Here is the 40 meter CW, which I'm running. But up here, I can see the Arcane Code Pro, which is our server, is operating on 20 meter phone. In addition, I will see other workstations light up on here in red. Now this will let people who suddenly decide, oh, I don't want to work 20 meters anymore. I want to work 40. Well, this will let them know, oh, I've already got another station there. I shouldn't go there. So once I'm done with that set up correctly, you now see that the data that I have entered on the server now appears here under recent contacts. So let me bring the server back up. I'm going to click done here and you can see, by the way, that the thinker pad now appears. So we'll click done. And now what I want to do is I'm going to enter a call. Uh, KF3, I'm just going to make one up. I have no idea if this is correct or not. Uh, we'll make him a 3D and we'll make him in uh, main. Now I want you to watch what happens when I hit enter on here. It's not only going to appear up here at the top, but over in the background, it's also going to appear on my workstation. And you can see my KF3 JLI now appears back here on the contest log. Likewise, if I come in here and let's enter something here. And we will decide there uh, to uh, a and their section might be Rhode Island. If I hit enter here, he now appears at the top under recent contacts. And if I come back over here and look at the server, you'll see that KG4FGN now shows up in this log. And so that's how this keeps everything working together. And that's pretty much all there is to networking. Again, the important components are setting the this station and server names correctly, setting TCP, and setting the enable status. I'll also mention it's possible to send messages through the network status. Let's say here, dinner time, and when I come back over here, let's close that, and coming back to our contest log, you can now see that the dinner time message has gone out to everybody. So this can be a good way for the field day chairman to communicate to all of the stations at once to let them know dinner time, start operating, stop operating, etc. Well, I hope you found that helpful. If so, give us the traditional like, share, subscribe. If you want to learn more about the other videos I do, just check out my website arcanecode.com slash info.